Welcome back to Backstage Live at the Saturday Early Show. I'm with Ron McGill from Zoo Miami with Shu. Shu. Hi, Shoe Ron. The bird. Shoo, how you doing? Good to be here. Yeah, so is, uh, tell us all about Shoo. This is a Harris hawk. This is a bird of prey that's found from the southwestern United States all the way down into South America. And a really neat thing about this bird of prey is the fact that it hunts in packs. They call it the wolves, they call it the wolf of the air. Because unlike most birds of prey that hunt on their own, these guys will hunt in, in, in groups of up to five animals. Um, and they'll feed on anything from small rodents up to things like, you know, cottontail rabbits. Um, a, a, a signature shot of these guys is sitting on top of a saguaro cactus. You know, they'll nest in the saguaro, and they use the saguaros as big lookouts out in the west. They're really stunning birds. Ron, is, th is this bird full grown right now? This bird is full grown. She's a female. Females, like in most birds of prey, the females get larger than the males. The females run the show. Really? Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Because there, there are some birds of prey. Yeah, see? See? I guess that she didn't like that. No, no, she was good. But but there are some. I, I just look. I've known Ron for a long time. Uh -huh. There are some birds of prey. I'm not sure what it is, but they can like can take down a deer or oh, something. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look. You talk about something like the harpy eagle, which is the largest, most. It's a the deer. most powerful bird of prey in the world. I've seen a harpy eagle take a full-grown howler monkey out of a canopy in a tree and keep on flying at 50 miles an hour. They have talons bigger than grizzly bear claws. Well, let's talk about Shoe's enemies. Well, Shoe's enemies really are, believe it or not, man, if nothing else. Um, you know, they also can have sometimes troubles with coyotes, believe it or not. Um, they really don't have any other real huge predators. Um, you know, coyotes, man, uh, development. And, and the biggest thing that kills them, believe it or not, Electrocution, power lines, is the really? number one killer of them in their wild habitat. Yeah, the but coyote's going to get one of these birds. It's going to get them when they're like a, a young bird, right? When I they mean, come down for a kill. Sometimes they'll come down for a kill. They'll mount all over their kill. They'll grab, you know, they'll grab a rabbit or something, and they get over, and they're so focused on it, and then the coyote comes out and snags them. Well, you know what's wild about all these little stories that Ron tells? What, Lonnie? He's not reading them out of books. He sees all this stuff. Yeah. No, I've been real lucky. I mean, I got, listen, I got the greatest job in the world. I got a scam going on. I get paid to do the things people pay to do. It's a great scam. Kind of like your job too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sh this so what, this is what we call chemistry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now you mentioned that um, Shu is a social hunter, but right. is it is it likely to ever see her alone? Oh yeah, absolutely. It can be seen alone. I mean, uh, you know, when they're when they're. Um, perching or looking out they can be by themselves uh -huh. they just tend to be more social they're also social in their love lives if you know what i'm talking oh, yeah, about sure, sure, sure. They're, really? they're polyandrous in other words a female will have sometimes two mates that she mates with and both the males will help her raise the chicks not knowing which one was the father oh yeah yeah no that's a good thing they you got going on yeah, there you want to chime in on this one lauren yeah, you I, come I back have, <laughs> I'm not commenting on that. How often do they meet? Oh, once a year. Once, once a year. Once a year, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, like, like I said... You want to comment on that? Hey, look, uh, <laughs> you you know, understand. I invited you into this segment. <laughs> Just remember that. I invited you here. So, <laughs> she looks remarkably alert. Does all of this scare her? I can imagine all these people watching, the cameras well, on. Well, this is, this is really a credit to the people who've raised her. You know, Grand Camera, Wild World of Animals, are, um, the animals that I always use in the segments here in the early show. And... An animal that shows this kind of temperament is a reflection of all of his work and his staff's hard work. You know, I come on here, I do a show, and I'm talking about an animal. They're the ones that do all the work. They really deserve the credit for that. Okay, now they're located in like Pennsylvania or something, aren't they? No, so they're really in the southwestern United States. Okay. There are a lot of hawks. There's red tailed no, 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 hawks. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking oh, yeah. about the animal agency yeah, that you work Grant, with. Grand Cameras in Pennsylvania. I just found out today there's all kinds of paperwork that they got to go through in order to get these animals here. Well, I mean, yeah, it's when I know the segment that we have to do, I have to get a list of animals, and then Grant has to get permits to bring them into the state of New York. It must yeah. be really hard to travel with the animal. Do you sedate any of them on no. their way here? No, and that's the great thing about Grant. That's why I work with Grant, because he works with animals that he does not sedate, he does not immobilize. These are all animals that he has acclimated to be around humans and be great ambassadors for their species. So how did Shoe get here today? Shoe came by truck, econo van, through the snow, hours and hours, to be with you. And how did she make out along the way? She's doing great. She's totally, totally settled. Yeah, Can we talk about her claw? She looks like she has, su is this Count. a, it's a feather. feather? It's just a little feather. She was probably scratching on something or shedding the feather, and she just got a feather on the end of the talon. The, they look very serious, I the have to say. The talons are the most dangerous part of the bird. So many people look at the beaks of birds of prey, and they go, oh, my God, I don't want to get pecked. I don't want to get nailed by the beak. It's not the beak at all. It's the talons that they use to protect themselves and to kill their prey. How large are the wings? You don't realize uh, it's it, until it, she actually it, it's, stands. It's probably about 24 to 30 inches wow. across, maybe 36. So, run, okay, so this thing takes down its biggest possible prey. Right. What right. what are we talking like? About a, a cottontail rabbit would probably okay. be the biggest thing something would take. And like I said, it probably wouldn't take it down alone. It would probably take it with the help of other birds. And understand, their eyesight is a huge contributor to their success rate because this bird can see a rabbit for close to a mile away. Try to picture a mile away seeing a flipping rabbit. So their eyesight is basically eight times better than, than a human's eyesight. Yeah, bionic man. What, what about, I, I actually just saw uh, something on the Discovery Channel about, f f is it called falconry or falcon, falconry? falconry. And they actually have like, 
hunting competitions. And, and they do. And a Harris hawk is a very uh, popular breed with the falconers you know because this, it's a social bird. Works? No, I've yeah, never yeah. actually heard they, of it. They actually, you, you go out and, uh, okay, maybe you, you must know yeah. more about it, but a bunch of falconers or whatever uh -huh. are out there with their birds. They train them to hunt. Yeah, and then uh, there's there are competitions, like who comes back with either the yeah, the rabbits, or whatever. Or... And, and the reason why, why Harris hawks are so popular in those competitions is because they're social birds. They don't get stressed out by seeing a bunch of other hawks around them. You see, so they're yeah. good to work in those social environments. So they're real popular that way. And another thing, you always, people look at birds the way they turn their heads, and they would say, oh my God, I can turn his head and look all the way up behind it. Well, understand that the eye of the hawk, like all birds of prey, is fixed in its socket. You know how you and I can do this right. up yeah, and down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birds of prey can't do that. They have to be able to point their head directly at what they're looking at. So nature's kind of compensated by giving them a tremendous uh, flexibility in turning around. Now, aside from hunting, are they so amongst each other social animals? Yeah, they are very social amongst each other. Like I said, they're cooperative hunters. They hunt together. Uh, they raise babies together. They raise groups together. They'll defend the nest uh, as groups together. Mm -hmm. it, like I said, it's perfect. But the perfect word for them is the wolves of the sky. Okay, right. the wolves, wolves of the, the sky. sky. That sounds scary. That's what they are. Have you ever like looking up the sky and see like a bunch of birds, like you know, you know, flying around? Mm -hmm. And then some of the big birds are picking on the little birds yeah. or something. Well, that's those are usually vultures. Uh, and when you see little birds picking on the big birds, those are birds like jays and crows, uh, mockingbirds going after birds of prey like hawks because hawks will eat their chicks, will eat their babies. Oh. So they're mobbing them. It's called being mobbed. Oh, really? And those birds come in. They're fearless. They'll come dive bomb these things. And you know, usually they win. Usually the hawk is like, I don't need this anymore, the, and they fly away. The blue jay is kind of a nasty bird. Well, blue jay's got uh, a lot of, a lot of husband yeah, to it. Yes, yeah, it, does. it does. Yes, it does. It does. I have a question. Yes, it does. Remember, remember all those birds that mysteriously died? Oh, the, the black birds that fell out of the yeah. sky. What happened? You know, that? nobody really knows, but I can tell you, it was not some like Armageddon. supernatural Armageddon or anything like that. The, okay, good. The, the, <laughs> the fact that all these birds were of the same species yeah. tells me one thing that all these species that, that, that were involved were birds that are high flock species, found in large flocks together. So it could have been it could have been a bolt of lightning or thunder. It could have been fireworks that disoriented the birds and they all died together. The fact is, if it was something like an Armageddon, it wouldn't have just been the one species you would have seen. You would have seen birds of all different species in the era dying, and that's not what you saw. You know, well, a bolt, wait, wait, a bolt of lightning could have taken out a bunch uh, of well, that uh, is not a bolt, not just a bolt of lightning, just the sound, the thunder. Keep in mind how sensitive birds are in their orientation of things. Okay, some cataclysmic weather event could easily disorient them, and they could fall to the ground and die. Look, uh, listen, Ronnie, the weather boy over here. I got a question for you. Why is it that when I mean, we see all these big thunderstorms out over the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. I see the big lightning bolts coming all the way down to the water. How come I don't see a bunch of dead fish floating to the top of the water after the, you know? Because most of the oceanic fish are way, way down low. Oh, so okay, the deep. electric current doesn't... And there are times when animals do die from that. But who's out in the, out in the middle of the ocean to see it? You know, it's like it the, thralls in the woods. <laughs> Does it make a sound if nobody hears it? Now, the I don't think the chairman can hear this, but she was making like a, a low kind of almost yeah, groan. Little, what is Gretel, that? Lord, this thing was making all kinds of noise during, uh, not even during no, his that, segment. That, 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 oh, that so was the she's calm. That was the mandrel. The monkey was Going, making the noise. <laughs> Yeah, that's the mandal. Gets excited. So what is the sound? It's just kind of listening, okay. just a kind of aware and kind of like, okay, I'm ready to get back in my box now. All right, well, we'll let her go back in her box. Ron, thanks for for coming with Sue. Oh, always a pleasure. Shu, it was so nice meeting He's you. Thanks great for bird. coming. Hey, did you hear the segment when he was up, with, you know, on, on the early The Jack show? Wars ate the cables? No. The, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, we had, uh, you know, the mandrel sort of made a little lunge for Rebecca. <laughs> You know, and I think they're now dating. But, <laughs> but he's got all these great little stories about like uh, the jaguar. It was a jaguar, jaguar. right? Big, fishes. Which fishes with its tail. Yeah, I I've actually seen that. that. They take a tail and they'll dip their tail in the water for fish, and then they grab the fish. How oh cool gosh, is that? that and is cool. then there's also the who follows the monkey around. Is that the, the, oh, the pig? pig. The, the pigs pig. will follow the monkeys because they know the monkeys are eating the fruit up top and the monkeys drop fruit. So the pigs look for the monkeys, they follow them, and they get all the, the and leftovers. And don't they migrate with a group of like a hundred or more? Exactly. Bush pig, the, the Bornean pig, bearded pig, is the only pig that actually migrates, which is unbelievable. It's really kind of like, cool. Like, what, uh, all at once, the one, one, yeah, a hundred pigs at a time sometimes where the, the elder animal or dominant animal will lead them on a migration to more food. Wow. It's unbelievable. Wow. World of the animals, Whoa. the wild kingdom, live the dream. Bring more animals next time. We will. All right, Thank Ron. You so much, it was Lauren. great meeting you. Ron, Thank you. you. Ron, oh, you're the best, Ronnie boy. Is the, is there something going on here that I just don't know? Ron was at my wedding. Get out. No, yeah, I, our honeymoon was fantastic too. <laughs> <laughs> now you see.